All right, boys, today we're going to be taking a look at the latest and greatest from ASRock, the Z790i Lightning. This motherboard ended up releasing at a very interesting time. On the one hand, Z790 is the almost end of life as a platform, right? We should be getting 15th gen and then the next four to five months, right? On the other hand, you can't really buy Z790 Apex Encores anymore or Z790 Tachyons. Except I have one more on my website, framechasers.org. Go there if you want to support the channel. So there is a gap in the market for a consistent 8,000 megahertz DDR5 14th gen motherboard. Also, we haven't actually had a consistent 8,000 megahertz ITX board for the entire LGA 1700 generation. The Edge can do it, but you really gotta bin those motherboards to find one that actually can, and that's no good, right? We don't wanna have to bin our motherboards, we want it to just work. Now here's the other curveball with all this. It is rumored that 15th gen is either going to be six cores or no hyper threading, right? So it is very possible that 15th gen might be slower than 14th gen, in which case this video might be uh, valuable five months from now, where people that want the fastest might be coming back to this video and grabbing this thing to hit 8,000 megahertz on their 14th gen CPUs. So then the goal of this video then is really simple. All we're gonna do is just see if this thing can hit 8,000 megahertz on a 14900K. And then we will try XMP to see if it works. And then we will try manually tuning it to see if it works as well. I will leave affiliate links to this product down below just in case it does end up being good and you wanna go pick it up and you wanna support the channel. But let's unbox this thing first and see what we're working with. So this video was brought to you by the supporters of the channel. I bought this thing off of Newegg with supporter money. ASRock did not sample it to me, so I can say whatever I want about it and give you guys an unbiased review. Such as, I already know what I'm gonna say, uh, this IO is dog shit. You literally get five USB ports and one USB-C. That's it. That's all you get. So this thing is really only for like pure gaming rigs, I wanna say. So you got like your mouse, keyboard, and a DAC, and then you got two spares, right? It's kind of a miss on ASRock's part here. They really, because this is the last Z790 ITX board that's gonna get released, they should have made it a gangbuster. Not, you know, I don't know. But if you want more unbiased reviews like this, and you want to support the channel in our vision of reducing the suffering of consumers through misinformation and false marketing, head on over to framechasers.org, become a supporter, get access to the Discord, where all information in that Discord is curated and filtered so that there is zero misinformation. And we post pictures of our animals too. Honestly, other than the I.O., there's not much to see here. They didn't even give you a full backplate. They only gave you one uh, this semi kind of backplate over the VRMs on the backside. And that's about it, honestly. One little thing I do like that they did here is they put three full-size fan headers on the top. A lot of other motherboards will either put one, two, or put little adapters and shit. I don't like that. They actually put three full ones here. So credit is due where they did a good job. But let's go upstairs now and throw a CPU in there, update the BIOS, and then let's go try some 8000 XMP sticks. So we're going to be using a Virgin Untouched Undeleted 14900K and the stock ILM mounting mechanism. Now the reason why we're going to be doing that to start off with is to remove, or I should say eliminate, any mounting pressure variances. Okay, so I just turned it on and uh, cause I'm gonna update the BIOS and there's no debug LED on this thing. So I, I don't even know what phase of the post it's in. So that's a huge, another huge miss on this motherboard. No debug LED? All right, we got it up and running here and we are updating the BIOS with the latest version. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a pair of 24 gig sticks because 24 gig sticks are easier on the memory controller. So we're going to go XMP one, then we're going to try 8,000 
first. And then we'll see how she does and what voltages she uses out of the box. Let's okay, see. so it seems to have posted fine, 8,000 megahertz. Let's see, system agent 1.25. Oh yeah, I don't know why they do this, man. You don't need 1.45 Q. Okay, that's way too high, you don't need that. And VD2, 1.45. So ASRock's still doing that same shit where they're just uh, shoving a shit ton of voltage into the CPU to try and make it work. So I, I wouldn't run it like this. I don't like that. But let's see if it's stable anyway at 8,000. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this for an hour or as until it errors. But if it passes an hour, then that means you can get it stable. So that'll be good enough for the purposes of this video. So... I'm gonna go take a poop while this does its thing, and we'll be right back. All right, check that out. An hour and 10 minutes at 8,000 XMP. So, um, I mean, the voltages are kind of over-volted a little bit, but I mean, in terms of signal integrity, the board can do 8,000, which is pretty awesome. So, okay, so I fired it up at 8,200 here. Let's just... Oh, so they actually bumped up the system agent voltage here a little bit um, to 1.3. Let's see the other two here. Voltage, well, that's the same. And VDD2, that's the same as well. So they bumped up the system agent for some reason here. But let's see what happens at 8200. Okay, so I actually came back and it looks like it hard froze completely. So... Um, 8200 out of the box is a no-go, but let me try and um, faffle with the voltages a little bit. I think I think it can do it. Let me let me just let me let me figure this out. A few moments later. All right, so we are back with some manual voltages, and I got 8200 working. So this is definitely the best. ITX board in terms of maximum FPS, right? There hasn't been another ITX board to date that can do 8200, right? So this is um, equal to the uh, Apex Encore for now. But let's go ahead and try 8400. I mean, why not, right? Okay, 8400 is a go. We're gonna... I would be very... Very, very impressed if this passed one hour, but we're gonna leave it, do its thing, and we'll be back. Ah, uh, nah, it aired out in 10 minutes, so 8,400, uh, not happening here. But, um, hey, still the best ITX board that you can get in terms of max FPS. Yo, let's go, look at this. So I actually did some tweaks last night. <clears throat> oh, sorry, my voice. I actually did some tweaks last night and left it on. I actually wasn't sure if it was going to work, but look at that. 8,400, what is this? 14 and a half hours stable. So I'm assuming this is 100% stable, but man, so Azrock nailed it out of the park with this little guy. Look at that. So yeah, it's the next day and it's been going for 22 hours straight. I'm going to be shooting for 48 hours just to confirm, but yeah, ASRock knocked it out of the park with this motherboard. It's too bad this thing didn't come out like two years ago. But yeah, this changes the landscape a little bit because it's uh, $270 on Newegg. So this is like almost one third the price of an Apex and all of the same performance, right? Not to mention you can't get Apexes anyway anymore. But um, yeah, ASRock did not lie about the capabilities of this motherboard. So... I will be updating the recommended parts list and I will be replacing the Apex out with this motherboard. Going forward, actually, I might also update the website and start offering this motherboard in the form of uh, Max OC bundles. Just in case anybody wants a Max FPS ITX build and also doesn't want a FAFO. So I will affiliate link this product down below in case you guys want to pick it up yourselves and kind of mess around with it. But um, the I.O. does kind of suck. It's only five USB ports, but um, it is cheap and it does 8000 megahertz. So it does what it's supposed to do. So which is more than you can say for most products these days. Let's be real. If you do end up picking up one of these motherboards for yourself, don't forget that ITX motherboards 
are a bit more difficult to kind of handle and deal with just because they're physically smaller. So there's much more heat soak going into all the components. Make sure you watch those DRAM temperatures. Don't forget to subscribe because we are on the precipice of 15th gen Intel and I think 9,000 gen AMD and we will have to review a crap ton of motherboards in the near future so you're not going to want to miss that. Also comment down below if you've actually picked one of these things up and what your experience was with it so that if somebody a month down the line ends up watching this video they can go in the comments and see other people's thoughts on it. Don't forget, go to the website, support the channel if you like unbiased reviews like this. Come join me on my stream over at kick.com slash frame chasers. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. so pretty you're pretty too